Welcome this evening to our third week of our Campfire Worship Service. Uh, we're so glad that you chose to join us this evening here in our digital worship space. And whether you're joining us on Wednesday evening at 730 or you found a chance and a time to get together in your own home to pull up a chair next to a campfire there, uh, we're so glad that you've chosen to join us here for what will be an evening prayer service. Luther always reminds us that prayer is just a walking conversation throughout our day with God. And the evening prayer service is no different. In fact, this evening, we're going to be guided through our evening prayer service through the words of Luther's own prayers as translated and compiled in this book called Luther's Prayers by Herbert Brokering. And so I invite you to join me now as we make our way into the worship service this evening, led by the Wright family singers, and as we're blessed by a reflection this evening from Lindsay Cowell about uh, the power of prayer in daily life. And with that, we begin our worship service this evening. God and Father, I do not doubt that the things for which I have prayed are promised, not because I have prayed for them, but because you have commanded me to pray and have surely promised to grant them. God, I am certain that you keep your promise and cannot deceive us. It is not the worthiness of my prayer, but the certainty of your truth that makes me firmly believe beyond doubt that it will be and remain yes and amen. Amen. Good evening. It feels like this week we might actually be uh, in the right weather for a campfire worship time. Uh, all summer long, it's been a little too warm to actually light our campfire when we've worshiped together on Wednesday evenings. So it seems like we've finally hit the right kind of weather. Although I'd be okay if it held off a little bit longer, like I'm sure you would as well. So during these campfire worship uh, times here online, we've been concentrating on uh, the concept of prayer. And so I wanted to do a little reading um, devotion from, uh, not from Martin Luther, uh, but from um, a book called Holy Everything, Reflections on the Spirituality of Daily Life. Um, it's by Pastor Emily Carson, who um, is an assistant to Bishop Hassanelli here in uh, Southeast Minnesota, and who is a good friend of mine who um, I aspire to be like uh, when it comes to prayer. So um, I wanted to read a little something for you from her book, and then I would like you to pray with me as we kind of go forward. Uh, the next um, several weeks, we're going to be concentrating on uh, the marks of discipleship um, and ways that we can take our faith into our everyday life. And so um, we're going to finish up with a passage from uh, Romans chapter 8 um, that talks about praying uh, consistently and without ceasing. So this little meditation is from Emily's book, Holy Everything. It's called, the little section is called, I Will Pray For You. Imagine the scene. You arrive at work. A co-worker immediately comes to your cubicle to tell you about some significant family updates. 
She's having financial and relationship struggles, and she's worried. Now imagine another scene. You are at church. Worship is over, and it's time for coffee hour. You sit down with a few of your friends from the last several decades. One friend shares that he's been diagnosed with something serious, and treatments start this week. Versions of these scenarios happen every day all over the world, and in the midst of complicated life situations, many of us say the only words that seem to make sense. I will pray for you. I hear these words a lot in and out of church. I will pray for you is a beautiful, meaningful way to express care and concern. It's amazing that God is available to hear us all the time. We can pray knowing that our Creator understands every word upon our lips and hearts. One of the great challenges, however, is actually remembering to pray. This is something I continue to work on as a friend and as a pastor. I'm still learning techniques to help me follow through when I say the words, I will pray for you. Here are a few of them. So here's one idea. Keep a list. I highly recommend keeping a small notepad in your purse or briefcase at all times. If you don't carry a purse, you can also keep a note card in your wallet. Whenever a name or situation arises for which you want to remember to pray, write it down. Otherwise, there are just too many things that happen in the course of the day and it can be easy to forget. Most cell phones now have applications specifically for keeping lists, so you can keep your prayer list on your phone as well. Choose whatever format works best for you. An erasable whiteboard in the kitchen can also be a good place to keep a family prayer list that can be added to by anyone in the house. Don't wait. If you offer to pray for somebody, sometimes it's helpful to do so immediately after the interaction. After the conversation ends, pause for a moment wherever you are, in the elevator, parking lot, grocery store, coffee shop, and offer up a silent prayer on his or her behalf. It doesn't have to be elaborate. Praying for someone right after you've spoken together is also a good way of transitioning back into the rest of your day. Pause, pray, and move ahead. Use your time creatively. Sometimes it can be intimidating to even think about adding a block of time specifically for prayer. If so, consider using a block of time already built into your day. Time spent dishwashing, drying your hair, Brushing your teeth or riding the bus can all be great opportunities to spend time with your prayer list. Stick with it. There are, a lot, there are a lot of ways to talk to God. It takes intention, but it doesn't have to be complicated. And it's never too late to start. With that being said, our passage that I wanted to read you was from, is from Romans chapter 8, verses 26 and 27. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know what to pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. And he who searches hearts knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. So it doesn't have to be complicated, and God even tells us in Romans that the Spirit will help us in our weakness. So if you don't know what to pray for, Sometimes just asking for a little bit of help or saying, I'd like to pray for this person or for this thing is enough because God knows exactly what it is that you need. So the next time that you say, I will pray for you, or you hear someone say, say that to you, then take a minute, take a deep breath and just say a little prayer, even if it is just Please God help. Amen. That's enough. So I'd invite you to do that. Remember, you can start wherever you are, however you can, and it doesn't have to be complicated. In that, we ask Jesus to help us and go forward in prayer. Amen. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. You came. 
Let us pray. It grieves us that we fail to understand and receive your good help. O oh, Father, give us grace and let your will be done in us. Even if it hurts us, continue to correct and do whatever you desire. Your will be done, not ours. Defend us, dear Father, and let us not undertake or do anything by our own conceit, intent, or volition. Our will opposes yours. Your will alone is good, even if it does not seem good to us. Grant us blessed unity and peace among all nations. Preserve us from all strife, hatred, and warfare, that we may eat our daily bread and receive bodily nourishment undisturbed and to your praise. Give understanding and a loyal will to all those who lead others. Guard all citizens against rebellion and disobedience. Graciously comfort and tend all who are imprisoned, hungry, thirsty, naked, and miserable. Also all widows, orphans, sick, and sorrowing. In brief, give us our daily bread so that Christ may abide in us and we in him forever, and that we may worthily bear the name Christian. O Father, relieve our consciences, now and in the hour of death, from the terror of our guilt and the fear of your judgment. Let your peace come into our hearts that we may await your judgment with joy. Be not severe in your judgment of us, or no one will be found righteous. Teach us, dear Father, not to trust or find comfort in our own merits or good works, but teach us to venture and resign ourselves faithfully and firmly to your infinite mercy. In the same manner, let us not lose courage because of our sinful and guilty lives. Let us regard your mercy as higher and broader and stronger than all our being. O oh God, help that we may, without faltering, do all these petitions. Let us never doubt that you have heard us and will hear us again in prayer, and that it will be yes and not no or maybe. Therefore, we gladly say, Amen, which means true and certain. Amen.
Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes. God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, watch over me. Amen. I give thanks to you, Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously protected me today. I ask you to forgive me all my sins, where I have done wrong, and graciously to protect me tonight. Into your hands I commend myself, my body, my soul, and all that is mine. Let your holy angel be with me, so that the wicked foe may have no power over me. Amen.